What is up lads and welcome back to a special edition of Squad Builder and this is kind of an ex Newcastle United squad and yeah um, I'll start off here with the manager just quickly put him in place in, in sort of the manager position guys we've got Kenny Daglish um, used to be the Newcastle United manager in the late 90s he didn't do very well he got the sack from the, the club you know he completely dismantled Kevin Keegan's great side you know he got rid of you know such great players like Philip Albert etc etc you know really um, poor manager in my opinion obviously he got the bullet at Liverpool in the summer um, not very good man manager at all in my opinion I'm, I don't really rate him at all <laughs> to be perfectly honest but yeah he's the manager in, in the team I do believe he's the only sort of Newcastle United ex-manager in the game so yeah I, I was looking for Sam Allardyce but I couldn't find him he could be in the game I'm not entirely sure but yeah I'll crack on with it nevertheless and this kind of series is currently going on on Mr. Rossi 1990's channel but I um, uh, just thought you know what let's just make my own one rather than you know waiting for him to sort of release his video on it if he, if he even does one so yeah that's sort of why I'm sort of doing this video basically I just want to make my own sort of uh, X squad um, sort of episode just for Newcastle United and if you want us to do your club as well I might do it you know we'll see how this sort of episode goes down but yeah guys in the goalkeeper position we have got Shea Given you know, really good goalkeeper for Newcastle, you know, a few years ago. Obviously, you say Aston Villa now, playing for, Repub for Republic of Ireland as well. Um, really, you know, decent goalkeeper in his day. Played in the Champions League, you know, made some very important saves. I rated him quite highly. I once sort of seen him at a McDonald's, which is quite a sort of funny story when I was a little bit younger in the uh, Lorden Bay. He was in Bay 1, I was in Bay 2. Bit of a, you know, YOLO moment. <laughs> and yeah, he's in goal, really good goalkeeper. It right back, guys, we have got Andy Griffin. You know, if you're not sure who Andy Griffin is, he currently plays for Reading in the Championship or the Premiership as they are going to be next season. I'm not entirely sure if he's got a new contract with the club, but yeah, and um, he scored a goal against Juventus in the Champions League a few years ago, years back at St James's Park. Really decent, you know, um, utility player in his day. He's getting on a little bit now, but yeah, decent enough um, bronze English player. And it's uh, no, not not bronze. We have got gold centre back. We have got Jonathan Woodgate. Um, he, what can I say about this guy? You know, he was potentially for me one of the greatest centre backs in English's you know modern history the last sort of 10, 20 years. But obviously injuries and fitness problems kind of you know it's ruined his career really. And it's quite a lot of these players you'll see in this sort of episode have had a lot of injuries and it's kind of ruined their careers as such. Jonathan Woodgate, you know, very disappointed how his careers ended up. I thought I had high hopes for him. You know, he left Newcastle, got Real Madrid a few years back for quite a large um, fee, and very disappointing. Obviously now he's at Stoke. His career is pretty much over. I seen him earlier in the season when Newcastle played Stoke, and he was very disappointing. And um, yeah, obviously you know he's not the you know greatest player anymore, but he was in his day a very good player when he was at Leeds United. Also, and it left centre back guys. This guy is an absolute offender. <laughs> we have got Titus Titus Bramble. This guy, what can we say about this guy? <laughs> Yeah, Titus Bramble, you'll all know who he is. He's a bit of a bit of a tank, shall we say. He's had his problems on and off the field. Was possibly one of the worst defenders I've ever seen in, in the history of defending. Horrific um, defender, but apparently when he was younger, sort of like junior football, he was meant to be really good. But I could sort of imagine that because, you know, the, the sheer size of him when he was younger, he would be able to bully players and, and literally... You know, get on top of um, that. Uh, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Let's just move on. Right, in left back, guys. We have got uh, not Patrick Van Antel. We have got Jose Enrique. <laughs> I'm probably going to get arrested for saying things about Titus, but yeah. And um, the left back, we've got Enrique. You know, he plays for Liverpool now. Obviously, left the club under a bit of a storm. He said we would never, ever, ever finish in the top six ever again. And obviously, he is, you know, being completely wrong about that. He said that um, the club weren't investing in players, though, you know, they were going backwards. And yeah, obviously, completely wrong. You know, the club are now lying in fifth position as of last season. Obviously, we're investing in the squad. You know, it looks like they're trying to sign Luke de Jong. They've had a £12 million bid um, on the table today, which is, you know, promising. Also, Debushi of Lille and Nita of Ajax and there's a few other players who are after so if we you know, add them to the squad Mr Enrique will be you know eating his words once again and obviously last season the home game when Mr Enrique went in goal it was possibly one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life so yeah Mr Enrique Jose Enrique Mr 88 pace at left back now right midfield guys this video was literally made for this guy oh it's Nobuto Solano <laughs> 
He is one of my all-time heroes, guys. If you don't know who Norberto Solano is, you really have missed out on the one of the greatest players ever. I'm not, I didn't even know he was in all of my team, to be perfectly honest. And um, absolute monster. You know, he's obviously not the greatest now. He's currently a manager in Peru. I think it's Peru. Yeah, Peru. And um, you know, he's he's an absolute beast. If you're a Newcastle fan, I really recommend you know sort of picking him up, just having a go with him on all of my team. He's got really good free kicks and all-time legend. You know, he was one of Bobby Robson's you know greatest sort of um, players in the his sort of um, time in charge, really good player, I really respect Norberto Solano, and um, yeah, he loves to play the trumpet as well, which is kind of an unusual fact. And at centre midfield, guys, we have got the one, the only, Kieran Dyer. And um, yeah, Kieran Dyer's career is a bit like Jonathan Woodgate, you know, they've got quite a lot of similarities, you know, started off so well at a young age and then just completely went down the pan. Um, Dyer's kind of just absolutely, his career is, is pretty much over, you know. I think he's currently at QPR, I'm not entirely sure if he's got a new contract, I would be extremely surprised if they have. Give him a new contract, that would just be financial suicide, but it is QPR we're talking about. And um, yeah. Um, Kieran Dyer, you know, in his day, a really good player, a lot of injuries, you know, a lot of problems, and he's, he's just never, you know, materialised as, you know, a great player that he could have been, you know, a very good attacking midfielder, but it's never worked out for him, which is, you know, really shame, you know, a bit like Jonathan would get, you know, there could have been so much uh, more for him in his career, so very disappointed how his career has ended up. And the other centre midfielder, guys, we've got Hugo Viana. There is a few more choices you could have made, but I went for Hugo because, you know, the simple fact is, you know, I quite like him as a player. You know, he's currently in the Portuguese squad at the Euro 2012. He's, you know, he, I don't think he's actually played in this squad yet. Um, in the squad, no, he's, he's in the squad, but he hasn't actually played, you know, like an actual game for the, you know, in the tournament. So, yeah, um, left foot player, you know, he was signed on the Bobby Robson, I do believe. And he, um, when we actually signed him, he was playing left midfield, um, which is kind of not his position, the sort of played him out of position which was a bit disappointing for him and his career never sort of hit the height of you know could have hit in Newcastle obviously he's doing really well now at Braga he also got the Europa League final was it um, last season uh, not last season the season before four, sorry and that was in Ireland I do believe and um, yeah really good player I really recommend picking him up if you're making a Portuguese side he's got quite nice passing he's quite good on the ball and um, yeah really nice, sort of nice little um, addition to the squad at left midfield guys we have got Inform Craig Bell. I mean, you might be asking yourself, so you know, Harry, why did you get an informed um, player for this team? You know, there's no need to get an informed player. You know, that's it. I'm like, no, no, no. Craig Bellamy, absolute monster, absolute beast of a player. If you've you know, ever seen Craig Bellamy when he was younger, he was an absolute monster. Really good player. He used to be a striker. Really, I should have Craig Bellamy there because he was a striker, but obviously now he's a left winger, or left midfielder. But his, you know, his best time was when he was a striker. Him and Alan Shearer up front were absolute lunatics. You know, Shearer and, and Bellamy didn't really get on, but Bellamy and Shearer was such a great partnership. And I'll never forget his two goals against Feyenoord. And um, yeah, really good player. Really recommend picking him up. He's quite cheap as well. Um, what, 16,000 coins for Inform 83, the right-footed left wing. Um, I also believe he might be four-star skills. He might only be free. I'm not entirely sure, to be perfectly honest. But really good player. I recommend picking him up. Yeah, crazy guy. Um, absolute, you know, um, canny guy. You know, but uh, crazy on the pitch. He's quite a you know, cool dude off the pitch. He does a lot of charity work as well in Africa, which is quite interesting about him. But yeah, in the right striker, guys, we have got uh, Michael Chopra. And um, yeah, Jordy Boy through and through. Obviously, he went across the river, which was you know quite disappointing for him. I don't know why he made that decision in his career. But yeah, obviously he's now at Ipswich. Um, I haven't actually showed you any of the prices of the players, but it kind of doesn't really matter because it's not really about that. That's quite a you know good record that 16 and 9. But yeah, Chopra and um, Ipswich. He's had his um, gambling problems. You know he's you know he's, he's been up and down this sort of this scale of you know craziness. You know he's had problems in his life and all that stuff. But you know he's he's applying his trade at Ipswich now and he's a bit of a goal scorer. You know he's not a bad player at that level. You know he can score goals and he's you know he's a decent championship player. I really recommend you know if you're making a championship side picking him up. He's he's you know decent enough you know little player. But he's you know he's had his problem. It left a uh, striker. We have got do, 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 Andy Carroll. I don't have him in the 4-4-2, which is you know it's a shame. It's only on the eight camp, but um, some guys price locked the 4-4-2 one obviously because the Euros is on, and I didn't want to shell out like ten grand when I could get that guy for two thousand. Um, so yeah, Andy Carroll 4-4-2. Um, no 4-4-2. Andy Carroll. What what do you want to say about him? <laughs> 
bit of a you know a sort of a you know quite a one-dimensional player you know he's not the you know the greatest player in the world but he is what he is he's a, you know he's a target man he's not gonna you know beat four or five players in um maradona turn and and dinking over the goalkeeper but you know he's a big you know he's a big object up there and he can head the ball and that is pretty much what he does he's you know he, he heads it and you know get the occasional goal you know he hasn't had the greatest sort of season this year he's he scored a nice uh, header obviously against sweden a few days ago but yeah that is the start of the 11 guys so you've got given and goal griffin woodgate bramble enrique nobito solano kieran dyer hugo viana bellamy chopra carol that's starting 11 now guys and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the um, bench and i'm also going to show you loads of reserves that you could have got uh, you know to add to the squad so obviously other sort of um, midfielders, you got um, Ambrose, who's you know um, quite quite a good um, silver player. Actually, it cost me five k, which is quite a lot. I kind of completely over and um, paid for him, but yeah, Yolo. And um, yeah, obviously Ambrose, you know, he got quite a good long shot. He was quite a good player. Newcastle never really hit the heights, and um, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much all I want to say about him. Obviously, we've got Andy O'Brien currently at Leeds. He was a decent player in his day. Um, you know, not a bad player, but obviously now he's getting on a bit and he's not the quickest player in the world. Other central midfielder, you got Scott Parker, who won the Intertoto Cup with Newcastle a few years back, which is quite a, um, a prestigious trophy to win, I suppose. And um, yeah, decent enough player. And yeah, that's all I'm pretty much going to say about Parker. Obviously, you got Open Femi Martins, a format number nine. Um, quite erratic. When he was at the club, he was actually on a sort of a goal bonus so the more he scored the more he made so that's why he would kind of shoot from anywhere a bit of a crazy character lots of pace and then um, he wasn't a bad player when he was at the club of a center midfielder we have got Jermaine Genes not you know not a bad sort of center midfielder he's never sort of hit the heights of what he could have hit you know he's sort of you know, maybe disappointed in his career you know he should have done a lot more than what he done but you know goldfish um, will always have his sort of day and yeah that is Jermaine Genius. So of a center midfielder we've got Lee Boyer we should put Lee Boyer alongside um, Kieran Dyer that would be quite funny and um, if we put him there like that does that get better camera see there we go Kieran Dyer Lee Boyer you'll all know what happened to them they kind of got into a bit of a handbag situation on the pitch which was you know quite funny and um, you'll never forget them for that other players on the bench we've got Aaron Hughes who's a really good player for Newcastle and to be honest I think he's one of the players that has left Newcastle and done really well you know he's done really well at Fulham He's, you know, he's becoming, you know, a very good, you know, Premiership defender, and you know, really rec sort of rec recommend him. You know, he's a really good player, and he's, do he's doing really well for himself. And at right midfield, obviously, there's um, Dam uh, Damian Duff. Absolute wanker, to be perfectly honest. I'm not I'm not a fan of him. Absolute scum. Don't like him at all. And um, yeah, he's there just for the crack. David Edgar there, it's centre back. This guy kind of he's kind of, you know, his careers went a little south, shall we say. And obviously he's at Burnley now and I'm not entirely sure how he's doing for Burn Burnley. He does have an inform out, so he's obviously He's done well at the start of the season, but you know, he could have been so much more, but he, he sort of left the club one of the players, sort of first team football, and obviously he may have that now, but I don't believe he's you know he's, he's gonna ever you know get to the heights he could have possibly got. He scored against Manchester United, I do believe, a few years back. So yeah, that is David Edgar. Obviously there's Joy Barton. Bit of a maverick, bit of a nutter. We can say what you want about Joey. He's quite a you know character. He's you know pretty crazy. But there's Joey Barton. Obviously, he spent time in prison when he was in Newcastle, and you know bit of a crazy um, dude. And then you got James Miller there, centre midfielder. There. He's you know he's done well since leaving Newcastle. Obviously, he's won the league with Manche Manchester City. He obviously went to Aston Villa after he left us, but he wanted first team football and regular um, sort of football. That's what he got. Not a bad you know player. Quite a you know you know sort of a steady player. Not the greatest in the world. Not the quickest. Not the slowest. Just quite a all round sort of you know workman like player and now guys I'm going to show you some reserves and do, do, do. I think I didn't buy Kevin Nolan which is quite a you know bad move by me but yeah and um, we'll go, go we're gonna go any first player I'm gonna talk about was Kevin Nolan I forgot to buy him which is kind of a fail but yeah Kevin Nolan he's not there but yeah you all know who Kevin Nolan is next player we've got is Giuseppe Rossi he was on loan at Newcastle United not the you know he didn't really do much at all at the club Glen Road I just kept him on the bench the next player we've got is Brad Fr Fred Friedel he came to the club and he did absolutely nothing. He couldn't get a work permit from him in the 90s, early 90s, and never played a game for the um, the club, but he was at the club. The next player we got is Louis Sahar. He was on loan at the club. He did all right, but he never really set the world alight. Then we've got Insomnia here. What Joe Kinnear called him. You know, he left Newcastle to go to a bigger club at, in Wigan. <laughs> and um, yeah, obviously, you know, Charlie's had his problems. He's never, he's, he, to be honest, he's disappointed this season, especially. He hasn't done anything with Villa. Very poor of him. The next guy we have got is on Wii U. On Wii U? I think I completely butchered that. But yeah, um, he was in Newcastle on loan a couple of years back. And then obviously, he's, he's turned out to be a decent enough player. He's getting on a bit now. I think he's, what, like 20, 29, 30? 
really. So yeah, he's not a spring chicken anymore. And you know, quite a you know decent enough centre back. The next guy we have got a bold Kevin Nolan in Stephen Ireland. Not the you know the greatest player in the world. Very poor at Newcastle. I wouldn't really you know recommend him. You know, quite poor, poor attitude as well. The next guy we have got is Boomsong. He currently plays for Panathinaikos, arguably one of the worst defenders I've ever seen alongside Titus Bramble, very poor player. The next guy we've got is Stephen Carr, you know, very poor defender in my opinion. 77 paces, you know, quite funny, he's not that quick, he's slow as out in real life. The next striker we've got is Michael Owen, you know, you know, money, grab, grab money, you know, call him what you want, absolute score in my opinion. Yeah, not one of my sort of favourite players, don't really like him at all. The next guy we got is Rosenthal. He was in Newcastle a couple of seasons back, didn't really do much. You know, he's now at Lille, which is, you know, quite good for him. And the next guy we got is Caldwell, whose brother is also on the team. We've got the two Caldwell brothers, and um, yeah, he was at the club, didn't do much as a young player. He was sort of released, I do believe. The next player we got is Wayne Routledge. He was at the club. He won the the championship with Wayne. Not a you know a bad player, but not really a, a Premiership player. Very good Championship, not a good Premiership. He's kind of one of them in that sort of bracket. The next guy we got is Patrick Van Arnheld. He was on loan at the club when we're in the Championship. Um, he only played a handful of times. Nothing particularly special. And um, you know, I wouldn't really. Um, I don't, you know, he's, he's been a little bit disappointed. You know, Chelsea, I think he's now on loan at Vitiz, and he's, I'm not entirely sure how he's done there, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, they've got Caldwell again there, currently playing for Birmingham. You know, not a bad central defender, but, you know, not the sort of the greatest in the world. Obviously, there's Cisco. He's currently still at the club, but obviously, it looks like he might be leaving, or hopefully, going to be leaving. Then maybe to Deportivo. Um, what can I say about Cisco? 55 grand a week on a five year contract. The bloke's made about 15 million out of the club, which is just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I wish I was him, but yeah, he's also gay as well, which is quite interesting. In fact, nothing against gay people, but that is just, you know, his preference. The next guy we have got is Abdullah Fai, absolute... <laughs> What can we say about this guy? Bit of a bit of a cart horse, shall we say? Not the greatest player you're ever gonna see. Very poor, in my opinion. The next guy we have got is Luwala Wa. Um, I'm very disappointed he left the club. Actually, went to Brighton, which was you know his his, his you know his choice. He wanted to play sort of regular football. I thought you know he had quite a lot um, going for him, but he chose to go to Brighton, which is fair enough. And he, I'm not entirely sure how he's doing down there. I don't think he set the world alight. To be perfectly honest, but he's currently at Brighton. The next guy we got is Claudio Casapa. <laughs> this guy is so like like he makes Titus Bramble look decent he's just a very poor player 32 pace you know very, very he's just awful it's perfectly honest I paid 1500 for him which is you know, a completely ridiculous man. There's not many on the market as well, which is quite frustrating. The next guy we've got is Alan Smith. He's, I do believe he's signed for MK Don. So, yeah, Alan Smith, you know, he's not really done anything for Newcastle. He was all right in the championship season, but beyond that, he was very disappointing. The next guy we've got is Habi Bay, whose career has went down the, you know, the swanny completely, and I'm very, very happy about it. Absolute twat, in my opinion. I've said a lot of that, a lot about a lot of the players, to be honest. I'm going to sound very bitter, but yeah. Um, don't like him at all. He's currently playing with Doncaster. I do believe he got released from Doncaster, which is quite funny. And um, yeah, good riddance to him. The next guy we have got is Fitz Hall. Currently playing for QPR, and yeah, he was he was wasn't bad for Newcastle in the championship season. He, he done a job, and that's pretty much what he done. The next guy we got is O. He was a youth team player at Newcastle. He never, I don't think he actually played a first team game, and he sort of turned into a, you know quite an ordinary player, nothing to flash. The next guy we got is Peter Ramage. He was from Berwick upon Tweed. Um, yeah, decent enough, you know, defender at sort of championship or you know level. You know, not a bad player as such, but never sort of hit the heights. You know, he should have maybe hit very possibly under a. And then the, the and the sort of the, these three bronzes are pretty much as youth players that we had a few years ago. We've got Guy, Zola, and Colin. There might be a few, few players that I miss, guys. If I missed anyone, leave it in the comments. I do apologise about that. But when you're doing this, it's quite hard to sort of make sure you get everyone. You know, you, you know, there's someone obviously you, you're gonna miss. And um, yeah, obviously I miss Kevin Nolan, but that's just a personal error. I was meant to pick him up, but I completely forgot. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will have a video out tomorrow. And peace.